Um, Peter, uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, uh, in the arrangements between the department and yourselves, I gather I've got 18 minutes. But, uh, you know, uh, I see the time has panned out slightly differently, so I'm not sure how much of time I've got. But please don't hesitate to uh, say, hey, your time's up. I think you had a news bulletin shortly and so on. And no doubt what I would have otherwise have said in my formal input uh, will be taken up in question time. So please tell me when I've got three minutes left. Uh, firstly, I should like to say that uh, in the interests of openness and transparency, uh, which is a term uh, politicians like to use and often don't mean. Uh, I, uh, you must remember that I represent the government as the shareholder of SABC, so I insisted to Mrs. Uh, Zandile Shabalala that she says that I look very smart with makeup. <laughs> I should also uh, tell Sipo Maseko I'm not as old as I look. <laughs> and a certain man who's now buried in uh, Hampstead Heat, I think, in London, said you mustn't confuse appearances with reality, okay? So I'm not as old as, as, as you might think. And hands up those of you, by the way, who know that there is now a pill called a digital pill, which you can pop into your mouth, and it monitors your blood le sugar levels, your cholesterol levels, your blood pressure, and other aspects of your state of health. And it can communicate it directly to your cell phone by SMS or your email on your computer, and more importantly, to your surgeon or your doctor, uh, at least the receptionist, and you can be hauled in and said, hey, you're not observing your diet and whatever. Or worse, your partner, your spouse, might also access this information and sort you out <laughs> for not exercising or observing your diet or smoking too much and so on. You forget your passwords, I'm told? Well. Uh, for your cell phone or your iPad or your bank account? Well, passwords, it seems, are on their way out. Your fingerprint scanning processes are very advanced now. I'm told you can also access your bank accounts and your cell phone and so on simply by scanning with your eye uh, over a cell phone, and for that matter. And, and in fact, the, the veins. I mean, others like uh, uh, Mr. Kruger here and those who are experts in this area in the department will tell you that the veins in, your, in the whites of your eye are enough to actually access. Uh, and I saw yesterday on the recommendation of somebody who was bouncing things off in preparation for what I say today, it's in Popular Mechanics this month. Aren't you impressed that I read these things? What did I even know about Popular Mechanics uh, uh, two months, two and a half months ago? But it says actually that you could even uh, have access soon enough uh, by singing a song in your head and the brain, magnetic waves will open your bank account. Now look, that's where, that's where we're going. <laughs> so if you forget to switch off your alarm, some of you might know at home and you're on the way to the movies or to a meeting, hopefully, by the majority party, and uh, you realize, of course, that you know, you've forgotten to put your alarm on at home, uh, you can use your cell phone to do so. If you're running out of milk in your fridge, it'll be communicated to your grocer if you have a direct connection to them, or to yourself to tell you, hey, your milk is fading away because the children have been drinking it, which is a good thing, of course, while you've been away. So there you are, all of this is happening. And uh, if you keen into downloading movies, legal though it isn't, well, we're very close to, I'm told, uh, having uh, the data from 240 DVDs down every second. So this is the sweep and the speed with which the ICT sector, as Mukshin suggested, is changing. The first wave of connectivity, many of you might know here, was of course linking through wire uh, houses and businesses. And the second wave came with linking mobiles uh, through wireless, uh, phones, iPads, uh, 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 tablets, and so on. Now we're in a third wave, people speak of it. I saw other gold star carrier piece in last week's Business Times about the internet of things driven by the spread of networks and the decreasing cost of connection. This includes cars, I'm told, airplanes, medical machinery, personal medical services, windmills, environmental sensors, and natural gas extraction platforms. By Cisco's calculation, 80 things are coming onto the internet every second. And it's estimated that currently there are 10.5 billion objects that are connected to the internet. And by 2020, it'll probably be 50 billion. What you might ask is the relevance of all of this to the old Gogo in Shlumayo or to the residents of Orange Farm. 
very much, actually, as some of you all know more than myself as a politician. Her prospects, that old lady, in Shlomayo, are linked directly to the extent to which we as a country connect with the global internet society, the knowledge economy, the information society, as it's called. If we do achieve our economic growth, development, and job creation targets, we'll have to be connected. And we'll have to significantly improve ICT, as McShane Williams suggested. The world, make no mistake, is in the midst of a digital revolution. We had the agrarian revolution, the industrial revolution, and similar in magnitude, though far greater in speed, is the current digital revolution. Today, as technology continues to change the world we interact, to be left out is to be outside the world. Uh, either we take part in this revolution or we're going to be swept aside, the digital divide that Mukshin spoke about. So this, this revolution, digital revolution, is transforming the nature of our society and its very fabric in the way the agrarian and industrial revolutions did. So ICTs, as you may know, are powerful tools for economic and social growth. Uh, the World Bank speaks of a 10% increase in broadband. In other words, to put it crudely for those outside uh, who might be observing this, uh, viewing this, uh, it's high-speed internet connection, okay? 10% growth in that leads to possibly a 1.38% growth in GDP in developing societies. So these wonders of technology may be open to many of us here, but the reality is it's not to the significant chunk of our population. And that is a challenge we have today, you as business and civil society and ourselves as government, working together to ensure that this digital revolution benefits the haves and the have-nots equitably. It's not just a digital divide between the countries of the South and the North. It's also very crucially. Already we have far too many social and economic inequalities in our society, as much as we've made significant progress since April 1994. And we cannot allow this digital revolution to reinforce those divides. It serves neither the interests of the poor nor the interests of those who are the haves, as most of us here are. Now, the growth of the digital economy in South Africa is significant, even if it doesn't benefit the population equitably. Currently, it stands at approximately 2% of GDP. Agriculture is 2.1%. E-commerce is growing at 30% a year, and the potential for expansion is quite significant. Currently, we know there are 410,000 SMEs in South Africa which have websites, and it's noted that those that do are strongly profitable, while those that don't are not. It is said that the SMEs account for 7.8 million jobs in South Africa, and it's suggested that 1.56 million jobs would in jeopardy were it not for online presence. So, wh wh what are we as, 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 as DOC doing? Firstly, you can look on our website, and you've heard this, Peter, and you can fall asleep now. I think I have said this in your presence about three times. Essentially, we have a strategy and program. The strategy has six interrelated parts. Firstly, whatever we do now is within the context of the NDP, as contested as parts of it are, the new growth part, and the ANC's Mangong policy resolution. Secondly, we need a more stable, effective department. Jobs have been advertised for three DDGs and CFOs. I hope some of you have applied. We need your skills, and we're going to finalize that within the next month. Thirdly, we're talking about a less fractious, though it's a highly competitive, fiercely competitive sector, ICT sector. Fourthly, we choose selectively what we do between now and April to actually uh, uh, set realistic and realizable goals. Fifthly, it's strategically chosen so that we set the foundation for much faster delivery over the next five years, 2014 to 2019. And finally, the ICT policy review, which I'll focus on in a moment. So what are the aspects of the program then? Point three of our six-part strategy. One, broadband policy strategy and plan. Two, develop an effective spectrum policy. Three, further reduce the cost to communicate. Those of you getting nervous from the mobile operators, of course we're going to take your needs and interests into account. We want investment in this country. We don't want you to flee. We have to also take into account the interests of the consumers. Fortly beginning the rollout of digital migration, and there will be questions about that. Greater focus on the rural and other underserviced areas. Sixthly, towards greater stability of the SOCs, particularly the South African Post Office and the SABC. Seventhly, cooperation of the Post Bank, which is quite crucial. Eighthly, the ICT policy review. Ninthly, a national ICT forum sometime early in the new year, launched hopefully by the President, and a community media policy, tenth, tenthly, if there's such a word, uh, uh, by the end of the financial year. 
On the ICT policy review, some of you are on the panel. It represents the range of interests in the ICT sector, not least different government departments. The review is looking at telecommunications, broadcasting, postal policy, e-commerce, and infrastructure. And the market we see in the work done already has changed substantially since 1994. I'll skip the statistics. Many of you know it very well, but I'll point out, for example, that since 1994, the telecommunications sector has grown from 8.2 billion to 157 billion in 2012. The postal market is now worth 10 billion. In 1994, it was 4 billion. Right, now there are only, of course, 800,000 ADSL lines in the whole country, meaning most South Africans do not have internet access in a wired way, which is issues about broadband. I'm told about 5 million South Africans do not have direct broadcasting services. Mobile coverage still has about 10% of the population to cover, even if there are more mobile phones in the country than there are people. Um, clearly, the ICT policy panel is saying we need a more effective regulator. We need to support the regulator more, provide it more resources, and they have just case for this, more capacity and so on, but the regulator has to be far more effective in ensuring that the service providers here deliver on their universal service obligations. Um, broadband we will deal with in a moment. Uh, we need an e-government strategy, obviously. Uh, there's a lack of coordination on, on, on government services, even around broadband. Look at the number of national departments, 36, over 156 provincial departments. Look at the municipalities and so on. Coordination is crucial to provide to citizens a seamless service from government as a whole. The research also shows uh, that actually the cost to communicate is high. The last report I saw suggested we 23rd on the continent, amazingly, uh, in cheapness uh, and affordability of, of, of that. And we've been doing work around that in the last week. We met ICASA and we met the mobile operators and uh, we're working on some consensus, if it's possible at all, in regard to that. So today there's also the panel uh, shows very clearly convert services. Your mobile phone not only makes, uh, gives you a chance to make calls, SMS, email, you can even watch television in certain countries and you can obviously have a radio service, which I do have and it's certainly here in this country. So we have to have a policy that goes far beyond the ICT telecommunications white paper of 1996. That was about 17 years ago in calendar years. It's like decades ago in ICT terms, as many of you will know. On broadband, we have begun to revamp the policy. We brought in some experts. Uh, we're seeking to get a version of it out by the end of November. We're taking to SIP 15, Strategic Integrated Project 15. There's a definition of broadband that we're edging towards concluding on, which says that it's always on connect activity where the user can access the most demanding interactive content to meet their needs in real time. It's enabled by a high capacity ICT platform with the potential to enhance the variety, utility and value of services and applications offered by a wide range of providers to the benefit of diverse uses, communities and across all sectors of the economy. Too many words. I've just taken it from the text I was given uh, from the experts. I would simplify that and to those people outside there, it's using your uh, mobile phone faster. Uh, and my time's running out, okay. Uh, and I'm pleased about that because I'm coming to technical issues here and I've drawn these from uh, the document that the experts gave me and I took other things. Okay, there'll be a definition of a minimum uh, megabyte per second. Targets will be set for public institutions. We're moving towards uh, hopefully CASA releasing spectrum in the 800 megahertz and 2.6 gigahertz bands. Uh, open access national uh, uh, backbone network, uh, investment in skills at various level uptake and so on. Let me, let me conclude, uh, Peter. I can feel your body vibes, as it were. Uh, they're quite intrusive, let me tell you, though your, though your words and your smile are much more accommodating, but you don't control time. I should say, by the way, I was very much here on time, so that we are behind time for don't blame the politicians, as often happens, okay? Uh, it's, I don't know whether it's New Age or SABC or both of them or who, but I have certainly been here on time. Let me say finally um, that, look, we're making three messages out, okay? There are three messages. One, 
As government, we can't do this alone. We need your help. Not just business, but the trade unions, community organizations, individual experts. I think, uh, Sia, we've met over 150 at least individuals and or organizations in the last 10 weeks. We've taken seriously what you're saying. That's why we don't want to go to cabinet. If we can do this, I'm offering it as a possibility, not a certainty, to come back to you on broadband because we've made quite a few changes. Uh, uh, on cost to communicate, I can speak more. Let me end by pointing out that Professor Andrew Forbes, it was in yesterday's paper, I think, and Sandile Ngobo from the CSIR on the excellent achievement in developing a digital laser system and beating international competition to transform the laser industry. Can we applaud them, please? It's wonderful that South Africans. <laughs> so, so we're saying we can't do this alone. We need your help, but we're not going to have endless discussions. There's no endless populism, as I like saying. We can consult, but finally, government must govern on all these issues. Secondly, we're saying let's ensure this digital divide its positive aspects in reducing inequalities in our society is drawn on, and its negative aspects of widening the divides between most of us here and the masses out there is reduced. Help us, and we will actually get together and make this country uh, uh, be the great country it is and can be and has shown itself to be in 1994, 2010, and a whole lot of other events. Thank you indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so uh, a lot to discuss, a lot to go through, and we've just unpacked a little bit of his speech, and we'll hopefully in conversation get to the rest of it. But uh, let's take